This story was submitted by Katherine Anderson. A few years ago, my grandparents passed away, and in their will they left me their old house. It was a two-story, three-bedroom fixer-upper. It had been sitting empty for a while and it needed a lot of love and attention, but eventually I got things in pretty good shape. This was back when Airbnb was first becoming mainstream, and I figured I would give it a try. The house was perfect for it. It had two spare bedrooms and a luxurious jacuzzi tub in the guest bathroom. To my surprise, it did really well. I booked one of the rooms almost every night, and on the weekends, I'd often have both rooms booked. I went out of my way to make sure every guest felt special. I'd make breakfast, give them directions, anything I could do to ensure they had a great stay. And I was pretty good at playing host, for the most part. I got a bunch of great reviews on the site, kept an accurate booking calendar, and was eventually recognized with the title of Superhost. It's a silly, meaningless title, but I was proud of it. My mom, however, was always worried. At her insistence, I installed a commercial-grade, double-cylinder deadbolt on my bedroom door. This version required a key for locking and unlocking from either side of the door. Plus, I assured her that through the website, I was able to look at every profile before I accepted any renters to see who might be a good fit and weed out any potential creeps. The system worked well. At least, it did until tonight. I found myself with the rare occasion of zero bookings. I decided I could use the night off to relax and focus on a little self-care. I celebrated my free evening in the best way possible. A bottle of wine, Netflix on demand, and an evening-long soak in that full-size jacuzzi tub in the guest bathroom. I was already two glasses of Pino deep when I heard it. The unmistakable sound of my front door opening. I put down my phone and listened. I could hear someone creeping up the stairs, and whoever it was weighed a hell of a lot more than I did. I blew out the candle surrounding the bathtub and waited in the dark. My heart was pounding so loudly, I thought it might explode inside my chest. The person reached the top of the stairs, shuffled past the bathroom, and continued down the hall. They seemed to slow at each of the guest rooms before moving closer to my bedroom, which I had left unlocked since I was home alone. Scared to make a sound, I reached for my phone and texted 911. It only took a few seconds before my phone vibrated with a text message. It was the phone company telling me 911 messaging wasn't available and to make a voice call instead. I could hear the footsteps leave my bedroom and start down the hall towards the guest bathroom. I quickly drafted an email to myself in hopes of creating a distraction and hit send. I heard my laptop faintly chirp down the hall. The footsteps stopped and headed back towards my bedroom. I immediately called 911 and relayed my situation. Dispatch told me officers were five minutes away and to stay on the line until they arrived. Five minutes. I couldn't wait that long. I had to do something. I stood up and the dripping water seemed to echo throughout the room. Every drop seemed loud enough to give away my presence. I had one more chance to create a distraction. I grabbed my phone and reconnected to the Bluetooth speaker. I hit play on the music app and heard music from the kitchen downstairs. I then heard the man race down the hall, hesitate, and then clomp down the stairs. I wrapped myself up in a towel, tucked my phone into the fold, and got out of the tub. I crept out of the bathroom and moved quickly down the hall. I knew that once I was in my room, I could lock myself in and wait for the police. 
Only one problem. I didn't have the key. It was in my jacket, which was hanging on the railing of the stairs. I crept back down the hall, tiptoeing as quietly as I could on the squeaky wood floor. And then the music stopped. I froze. A moment later, I heard him coming back up the stairs, and I rushed into a nearby closet and hid. My heart sank as I listened to him looking for me. He walked over to the bathroom and stopped at the door. I imagined he saw the fogged up mirror and the wet footprints on the tile. He then continued down the hall toward my bedroom. I was crouched in fear, praying the police would arrive before he found me. I heard him enter my bedroom, pause and look around, and then move slowly toward the closet. When I heard him throw open the closet door, I knew that was my chance. I leapt out of the guest room closet and raced for the key. I grabbed it from my jacket and ran back toward my bedroom. When I reached the door and saw his face for the first time, I realized I knew him. He was a recent guest who had stayed with his wife. There was a tense moment where we both stared at each other and then he rushed in my direction. I slammed the door closed, locked him inside, and ran for my life. The police showed up 20 minutes later and arrested the guy. Apparently, he was sitting on my bed, calmly awaiting his fate. It turns out he had made a duplicate copy of the house key while he was out shopping with his wife. Since then, he had been checking the Airbnb website to find a night when I had no bookings and I was likely to be home alone. Despite all of this, I still ran out my rooms using the Airbnb site. I did, however, make some security upgrades, including keypad locks that reset with every guest. But I shudder to imagine how things would have gone if I didn't have that double-cylinder deadbolt. Welcome back to our dark little corner of the interwebs. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I personally think the team knocked it out of the park. And if you pause it at 2 minutes and 38 seconds in, you'll see some of the films the directors worked on. Go ahead and check them out. And I wonder, how often do Airbnb hosts run into creepers like this? And I also wonder, how often is it the Airbnb host that is the creeper. Let me know your thoughts. And remember, you're never alone, even when you're in the bathtub and you think you are.